Hi folks, I'm back with you again for my ramblings. It's been a few days since I did my last one. And uh, I question myself sometimes, uh, you don't do it regularly, what's the point? But then another part of me tells me that you should uh, go, or, or go and speak only when there is something worth speaking, something that might be useful to the people who care to listen to you. So if I'm infrequent, it's because I have very little content to contribute that I feel may really be useful to you. So today, uh, let me continue about uh, uh, a subject that I talked about earlier. It's about uh, basically uh, strengthening that inner purpose uh, of yours uh, rather than being driven by the external reward or recognition. So uh, in this regard, I have reminded of a very nice article I read. I am not able to remember whether it was Lee Ayakoka, the guy who revived uh, Chrysler Motors or uh, the other uh, gentleman who was the uh, uh, IHG, IHG group, uh, IMG, IMG group, uh, the sports entrepreneur. But um, uh, I think it was a sports entrepreneur. Uh, he, he talked about this whole competitive race, rat race uh, of this world and uh, gave the you know uh, philosophy that uh, you should always uh, be content with rank number three, not one, not two but rank number three and that's interesting. Uh, so his reasoning was that uh, when you're number three, you know that even as you're working towards the next milestone, there is already something ahead of that too. So you you must only know that this is a, a milestone. It is not the uh, destination. It is not the end of the journey. And uh, if, if the number one is what you really aspire to, and uh, that, uh, in a sense, uh, also puts uh, balance in your effort. It tells you that you've got a lot of uh, uh, length to go still, but right now your focus should be on the next milestone only. So that's, and then the, uh, by implication, when it comes to the number two, uh, he actually is full of praise for number two because it is a number two, the challenger, the striver, who keeps the number one on his edge. And uh, it, the difference between the number one and number two is, is usually not much. It could be circumstantial, it could be just that day or that particular selection or whatever it is. Uh, my sense is that in most uh, competitions, in most uh, fair market uh, uh, operations, the difference between the number one and number two organically may not be large unless you become so large by acquisition and you know sheer money power. So that's, that's again to me not fair market practice. So uh, number two is a very good position to have because it means that qualitatively you have all the ingredients to be the successful one. Uh, you may be not having the opportunities or the you know, uh, circumstances uh, behind you. So uh, it, it's a very nice take on uh, and how vulnerable number one becomes because when you're number one, then there's nothing higher to actually look forward to. People are only ready to topple you down because they want to see another number one soon. And this happens in sports. It happens in, uh, you know, politics everywhere people uh, once you've got it okay you've enjoyed it now let the others uh, grab their space so you automatically uh, lose importance after you become number one unless you are so creative and so ahead of the uh, others uh, ahead of the curve that you constantly delight them with something new and you're bettering yourself uh, every time uh, a related uh, part of this is uh, the when it comes to you know uh, we human beings uh, subconsciously are always sizing each other even when we are in front of one another in a gathering or whatever so it's always like this body language so uh, am i better is you guys better or are you bigger are you small whatever and we have conditioned to that unfortunately and here again uh, one of the articles i don't remember what, where i read it but it's about uh, accepting number three at, uh, number three is about okay uh, the first is god uh, god is about bigger than everybody else so in this case the invisible number one and uh, the, the other person, okay, you're number two and I'm number three. Uh, but uh, when you do that, it takes away all the tension from your body. And it, uh, it, it, it makes you come into the arena with no expectations, but just in sync with your own self. Especially when you're performing, this is very important. Because, in, uh, for example, if you're in a music uh, program and you're one among 15 people, everybody's going to do different songs, everybody's singing a different type of thing. And uh, there is, first of all, no reason for you to be compared. But the way we are programmed, the audience, after the show is over, they are not going to look at this as a garland. 
they are not going to look at it as one you know one uh, fabric they go and do then say oh this particular flower was good imagine if you have a shirt and say this part of the shirt of this button is excellent so let me just take the button it doesn't uh, it, it actually robs away the whole uh, purpose of putting together uh, uh, a collective uh, uh, experience so uh, this this is a human conditioning uh, the pressure to rank and the pressure to you know compare will always be there but uh, know that you have a purpose that you have decided your inner purpose is what drives you uh, you have come here uh, for a very specific purpose in this world the purpose only you know whether you know it or not you know uh, but there is a purpose and uh, just uh, try and uh, do justice to whatever you feel is best and for the sake of those people who are willing to listen to you they may be one they may be a thousand but those are the only people that count in life and the numbers don't matter it should be those people who genuinely appreciate or even genuinely send you feedback so that they are partners with you in your journey towards accomplishment i hope you like this i hope this helps all creative uh, folks like you uh, to know what really matters and just work towards it god bless you see you soon